And Stephen, welcome to Amir Approved Show, man. How you doing, brother? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And so we had uh, the reason why I brought you back on is uh, I I did a podcast with you where you analyze my disc profiling that you did your individualized assessment, and the feedback was both. It was like a binary feedback. You had a group of people who was like, wow, this is amazing. Like the insight. Yeah. But at the exact same time, you had the opposite group. Like, oh, this is all bullshit. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, you can't just put yourself in a box like that. And I'm like, it's not putting myself in a box. This is just analyzing my natural innate behavior. This isn't me saying, you know, it's not me saying I'm set in stone. Like this is the end all to be all. But for the most part, this is a spectrum. How I, how, how I genetically behave based on my genetics and my upbringing. You know, it's not yeah. like I'm going to go in and change my genes with like, you know, DNA gene testing. We're not quite there yet. In the future, we probably will be where you can alter your genes. Uh, but that's still, that's just the, the hardware. You still got to then alter the software to behave with the hardware. So the mm -hmm. reason that I have you on is I want to kind of dive in deep and educate people on what you do. It's like, what's the science behind it, what you do, and how can people benefit from gaining this knowledge? Because for me personally, it's been, it, it validated everything that I was kind of having a hunch about. Mm hmm. OK. Um, yeah. So um, it, 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 here's the deal. It's super simple, actually. Um, I mean, the algorithms are a little a little bit complex, but the simplicity of it is is when it comes to the behavior piece. Remember, your behaviors are driven by your emotions. Um, so if I get angry, emotionally get angry, then I may act quickly. Um, if I'm dominant or I may shut down and go silent, I call it the dark side of the moon if I'm passive. Um, so we measure the levels of consistency in your four primary emotions, which are anger, optimism, patience, and fear. And as you said earlier, they're captured in the moment that you take the assessment. Now there's core behaviors, um, uh, which is unconscious, it's largely unconscious to us. Uh, so if in a simple disk um, setup, you're, you're looking at uh, questions and you're looking at words and you're saying, out of these four words, which one is most like me? And then out of these four words, which ones are least like me? So when you're saying, oh, I'm least like that, that doesn't mean you don't have that emotion. It means it's unconscious to you. So the least answers end up in graph two and the most answers reflected in graph one. And there's an algorithm that takes place that sorts this out in a way that I fully don't understand, but I have a mathematician that works with me that does. Um, Do you so, want to kind of give us a bird's eye view of exactly, like I, I know some people are probably confused right now, like what the fuck are these guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, uh, what's your question? Like a bird's eye view of the method methodology of what you do. Okay. Like, like a Coles notes. It's like, okay, like I'm coming towards you. I've heard about you through friends. Like, what do you do? Like, how does it benefit me as an end user? Well, you know, I, I run you through three separate tools, um, uh, a behavioral, um, which is based on your primary emotional consistencies. Uh, a motivational, which is seven motivational elements, um, and then the integration of those. In other words, what type of environment is going to be pleasing to your brain? Like if I'm out of control in an environment and I'm not in control, I'm going to feel brain tension, which isn't because I'm a control freak. It's because I'm not able to be in charge of my own space and I don't feel good when that happens. Um and so it's a measure of what we value when it comes to these seven elements. And then we measure uh, the axiology, which is um, meaning. Um, I just had a gentleman yesterday I talked with, son of an entrepreneur. And if I said his name, you would know who it was. Um, he needed a score below 30 to be really good, in good shape. He was 154. Oh. It was the worst <laughs> axiological profile I've ever seen. Mm. Uh, so this individual lives in an alternate reality because he cannot see the world at all. Well, mm. I find out he's not working. 
And every time he tries to work, he either quits or gets fired. Mm. Um, so what does he do? He games eight hours a day, mm. usually in the evening and into the night. And he's on Twitcher and he wants to make money doing this, which I, I know you can. Um, but that's, I said, that's your alternate world. That's the world you live in. But when you go outside of your home, that's not the world you see. And he doesn't get it. He doesn't understand the world. So, you know, I'm recommending MDMA therapy and some other things um, to help him along. Um, but it's fixable, but it's arduous. Um, but he, he was almost, he was shaken up. He said, for the first time in my life, I'm talking to a person who doesn't think I'm a lazy bum. And, and he was that, smart. That, he was smart. That's what, exactly where it is. So like people are listening. What's What Steve does is, as he mentioned, there's, there's a lot of mathematics behind this and stats and a lot of like years and years of research from many, many, many very intelligent people where you go through a process of, questionnaire process like a lot of let's summarize it as a survey a mm -hmm. real deep dive survey and it's long it's not like simple check 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 it it takes a while for you to complete this survey and you can't rush it like you have to think about the questions and be mm -hmm. honest um and based on this deep dive survey coupled that with uh, the mathematical statistic pattern on the back end you get two types of behaviors you have innate behavior which is, let's say, your naturalistic behavior as a mm -hmm. human without you being in any circumstance. This is how you kind of behave in a certain spectrum. Then you kind of have, I think you called it like, what was it, artificial behavior? What was the second it's one? It's adapted behavior. Adapted behavior, Which is that's how right. you act in shared space. Because when mm. you're sharing space with other people, whether it be in your family, your work, your, your relationships, your partner, um, there are requirements, requests, demands, negotiations, that are coming from other human beings that you have to fulfill. Um, and uh, I say to a lot of people, I, I get a lot of people, their relationships, their marriages, whatever, they're not in good shape. Mm. And I said, the reason being is because um, you, re you promote requirements as requests. And when they're not fulfilled, you get angry, you get hurt, and you create a separation. What you should be saying, you do that again, you're out on the street, you asshole. That's it. No yeah. plan B here. But what do they do? Would you please not do that? We comes yeah. by the sociopathic monster, does it again. Yeah. Please not do that again and again and again. They don't set boundaries. They don't, they don't do this. So in shared space, they fail. They fail yeah. in shared space. Yeah, or, or, or they can just leave. <laughs> oh, yeah, they could, you know. Um, so this is where we get into what our brains need versus what they want. Um, but let me ask you a question. In general, would you like to see a more natural overlay between the natural and the adaptive behavior, or no? I don't understand you what you what you're getting at with that. You you have a score of a natural behavior, right? Yes. So, then you have a score of the adaptive behavior. Yes. Would you like them to have a similar pattern? Oh, okay. Um, that's not going to happen a lot. And the reason being is... Be now, when it comes to entrepreneurial people who have nobody managing them but themselves, that pattern will remain similar. Gotcha. Um, or it will become more um, uh, consistent. It'll get stronger, which means they stretch out. Um, when I see a subordinate with similar profiles on adapted versus natural, it means they're not being managed mm. or they're doing exactly what their brain is wired to do. And so they can operate out of their natural set of emotions and it works for them in shared space. So there's shared space and then there's separate space. So we live in separate existence or shared existence. Um, if you were the only person on the planet, you wouldn't be putting stuffed animals in the back window of your car. Mm -hmm. We only do that so other people can see them. We don't hang dice from the mirror when we're the only person on earth. It's in the way, but mm -hmm. we do it so people can say, oh, they had dice hanging from the mirror. Like almost everything we do is in response to another human being. Yeah, social signaling. Yeah, and, 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 and bumper stickers, you know, all this stuff. I'm trying to let people know you know, uh, I have certain ideals or what, whatever the case. And if people don't approve of them, I get hurt or I get angry or I get independent or wh whatever's going to happen. Um, but when you understand yourself fully, 
then you can pick and choose the environments you know will work for you. Um, now, most people uh, are passive. I would say the number is between 70 and 75 um, uh, percent. When it, it seems comes... it, that kind of seems, I, I'm I'm kind of viewing the lens of the work that you do from an evolutionary aspect. Mm -hmm. Right. So biology, sociology, and uh, you know psychology, evolution, the whole umbrella of evolutionary observation. Yeah. Yeah. And like you look at tribes, like let's focus on the simple Dunbar's number, 150 people, right? Mm -hmm. And you look within the tribes, you have certain archetypical type of people. There's even like interesting studies on like why certain, why tribes had sociopaths. Like mm -hmm. they were actually used for certain, like in wartime measures. You know, there's a saying they need a wartime leader and a peacetime leader. Mm -hmm. you know, the psychology is completely different, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, and so like you look at these dynamics within a tribe you have, let's say, different types of leaders and different type of like totem pole, uh, let's say, hierarchy, it kind of makes sense to where a group would follow, let's say, the uh, closed group politicians of the day, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and so now we're in a much more stickier situation where we're not in hundred and you know 150 type of, uh, of Dunbar number tribes. We're in this global society. Interactions are much more complex, much more dynamic. It's a compound effect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Owen E. Wilson, you know, the famous biologist states, we have paleolithic emotions, medieval institutions and godlike technologies. We're still chimps, but yet we have this technology that's feeding into us. And we have society that's kind of trying to struggle with the fact that we haven't really upgraded our software in the last million years. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I've been reading about that. Um, uh, there's a great book out there by uh, Michael Shermer called the believing brain oh um, that's the fb is that the that's the hoax conspiracy guy yeah yeah, yeah 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 so why do people believe weird things um and it's it's a powerful read and uh in, in in the way human beings do things is we need things to believe in we need um uh certain environmental atmospheres for us to feel good and safe 